here on Football Manager 2021. I am, of course, M4J. I will be your host for this evening, um, as always. Sure, let's just go with that. Welcome back then to Football Manager. As I said, we're going to transition into the game very, very shortly. I'm just putting my headset on because I knew I forgot to do something tonight. There we go, and the music restarts. Sorry about that. Alrighty. So we are back. Uh, hopefully the game is in a way so that the score bar is visible at the top. Looks like it will be. Good stuff. Um, so yeah, welcome to the start of Season 2. Season 1 was very, very good for us. We won the league. We also won the cup. Season 2 then, hopefully, is going to be just as successful, if not more so. Um, I'm just checking quickly to see if my Twitch is working. Because just now I tried to post something in the chat and it didn't go and it seems to be working god that's looks awful <laughs> yeah it doesn't look the best on twitch it doesn't look terrible but it doesn't look great huh anyway yes so what's happened uh since tuesday's episode then well i have completed pre-season you can tick that off as being done if i go over here now i'll show you our pre-season so we only lost twice and that was right at the start 2-0 loss against uh russian and diamonds and a 5-1 loss against newport county after that though lots of goals scored still um highlights in particular being a 3-2 win against dover goals from sadler studholm and baker the uh 2-1 win against cambridge with gadger and harding scoring and then a lovely 4-0 win against my uh, my team, Stevenage, with Baker getting a brace, Hollis and Cantwell also scoring. The uh, the youth um, graduates doing very, very well. Very happy with that. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to think what else I was going to talk about. Uh, oh, yes. So we have the new rule coming in place from the start of this stream, which is as soon as the first ball is kicked against Stopfold, which will be momentarily... Any player who leaves the club, joins another team of any kind, that's it. They're gone. We might bring them back in the future, but I'm not using the editor to bring them back like I did last season. Because at this point, we are beyond the realms of reality. We are starting season 21-22. Uh, good evening, Tom. My editor has arrived. Um, we're starting season 21-22, and therefore, whatever happens here is now canon. Um, so anyone who leaves stays left. Anyone who joins hopefully stays joined. We'll see what happens there. Um, we have turned semi-pro, so a lot of our first team squad are now secured on uh, part-time contracts. And this is what the squad looks like at the moment. So it's pretty much same as. No one's joined, no one's left, apart from the youth players, of course. Is it just me or is the music louder than usual tonight? Can you hear me over the music still or is it really, really loud? I actually don't know. Um, I'm also going to remember to start the recording on the video tonight as well before the match kicks off. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Uh, so we're going to be kicking off in the Spartan South Midlands League Division 1. And in fact, we might as well get into it now because there's lots to talk about during the match. So I might as well... Ah, that's the one thing I wanted to check was turn off the match plan. You can hear me, but not the music. That's interesting. Ah, the volume's low. Okay, I've got it really loud in my ears, so it might just be that. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's all right. Doobie doo. Yeah, that's right. And then if I go back here and do this. Ah, yeah, okay, it's... Maybe maybe you can hear it. I don't know. If you can't hear it, then I'm going to have to talk more. But that's fine. Uh, so yeah, match plan is off. Let's go into this screen then. Um, so we're going to get them to play... I think it said attacking rather than positive. So I'm going to switch that. Uh, and then the, as for the lineup. So Baker is suspended because I think he was sent off last game of last season, was he? Something like that. Uh, so who have we got actually that can play up front? Oh, he was sent off in the cup final, wasn't he? I remember now. Uh, oh, I guess we're going to be starting Jacob up front then. Uh, and then Baker's going to drop out and we'll bring, I guess, Cantwell in to play there. So we've got the Twins, Cantwell. Yeah, okay, this could be a good lineup. Uh, Argent's still injured. He's um, still struggling. I can't remember what his injury was now, but it sounded very painful. And... 
Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this lineup. I set this up a few days ago, so I'm trying to go over it again and remember who's who. So we got extensing goal. Back four of Nash, Sadler, Evans and a two. Midfield duo of Hammond and Harding, although Harding is currently in talks with Morecambe, I think it is. So he might be the first player to leave, sadly. But I, as I said, I'm, my hands are tied now. I can't stop them. Advanced midfield of Stud, Home, Hudson, Doncaster and Gonzalez, Velasco. And then Jacob up top. Bench is Ruiz, Tuttle, Gadget, Batten, uh, Chowdhury, Twins and Cantwell. Let's get into the game. Everyone's happy. No one's upset. That's good as well because it means the tactics are now starting to take awesome stuff. Considering we're only making one change as well, that's good that they are actually um, happy with that. Right, start the recording now. So hopefully that is working. Let me just check this. That's all fine. And then check the audio properties. That's also fine. Right, so I can forget about that now. Here we go then. First game of the season. We should be winning this one comfortably. Play your own game and you'll win. Literally only two people responded to that. Evans and Cantwell. I'm sure. Fine. Whatever. Let's get this show on the road then. So as, as I said in the, uh, the social media link for this stream. Last season... Uh, the season 2020-21 has now finished for most teams. The Premier League is obviously still going. And I think the National League maybe is still going. I don't know. But the Championship League 1 and League 2 all finished this weekend. League 1, in fact, finished today. League 2 and Championship finished yesterday. Steamish finished, I believe, 14th in League 2 in the end. Which, considering we were bottom of the table around Christmas time, that's very, very impressive. We had an excellent second half of the season. And we could have perhaps pushed for a playoff spot. Um, had we kicked ourselves into gear a little bit earlier. Offside. I was about to say, if I just talked over another goal. That was a nice bit of movement and play, though. It's just a shame it was flagged. Um, yeah, Steamish went on. I think it was a 13-match unbeaten run as well, which was absolutely fantastic. But it just wasn't to be for us this season. But we had some really, really good highlights. Some really good players playing for us throughout the year as well. And, yeah, Newcastle also managed to pull off the impossible on Friday by beating Leicester. And meanwhile, in two weeks' time, on Saturday, Hatfield are actually playing in a tournament arranged by the club themselves. There's two tournaments. There's one on the 22nd and there's one on the 29th. I'm hoping, uh, government rules uh, pending, I'm hoping I might be able to actually attend the one on the 29th. That would be awesome. And actually take up my role as uh, director of media properly. Uh, but the one on the 22nd I might also be able to go to. We'll see. But it's really awesome that the club have put these two tournaments on. Um, it's just nice to have football, to be honest. It's just, just just nice to have football. Hatfield's league ended back before Christmas. Um, it was null and void. So it's just nice to have players out on the pitch running around. It will be also nice to meet the players for real as well. Because I've been talking about them on the game for so long. But it would be nice to actually uh, get to introduce myself and say, Hey, I'm the guy that benched you last week. Uh, and then turn and run away. But yeah, the club are doing some really awesome things right now. They may or may not have uh, teased the new kit. I saw photos of, of a kit. I don't know whether that's the new first team kit or not. But if it, regardless of who it's for, it looks amazing. So I'm happy with that. Um, trying to make it, though, on the game would be an absolute nightmare. So I might have to get some professional help for that. And then um, what was the other news I was going to share? Oh, yes, recruiting. So they're currently recruiting for next season. Um, all age groups, from what I can tell. Uh, men and women's team. If you're a young budding footballer and you'd like to be involved with an awesome football club that helps shape the future of the sport, I recommend getting in touch with Hatfield Town. I might start putting their email, actually. I'll ask John's permission, but I'll put their email in the description. So if you uh, want to sign up, um, you can follow the link there. It's, I always think, again, Premier League is fine. Don't get me wrong. And Football League is fine, too. But if you want to get involved with football, non-league is always a good place to start. Um, there's a lot of stories now of non-league players making it in the big leagues. So don't feel like you're you're sacrificing anything. Um, it's just a good way to get your foot in the door. Uh, you know, non-league clubs are always a lot more friendly and um, personal than professional outfits. It's personal opinion, mind. Doesn't necessarily mean it's the same for everyone. But yeah, there's some good stuff going on with football in general, and good stuff going on with uh, with Hatfield. And I will be writing a blog. Uh, I keep saying I'll do it, and then I forget to do it. But I will be writing a blog at some point in the future about my experience with the club so far, and also my uh, my thoughts on the season that's just finished. 
Um, football blogging isn't necessarily something I'm going to do full time, but it, I might as well get some of my thoughts down. Especially as this season has been one so different to what we're normally used to. Even last season, in comparison, feels more normal than this season. Uh, so yeah, be interesting to get other people's thoughts on it too. We also had goal of the season. Top 10 goals of the season went up on the channel the other day. I will be putting a poll up this week uh, where you can vote for your favourite goal of the season. I think I know which one mine is, but um, still, I will uh, put that poll up and I'll promote it everywhere I possibly can so that um, people can join in and, and have a little vote. There's no trophy or anything. Don't get too excited, but it'd be cool to at least get, get a vote going on. Hudson Doncaster with the shot. There's the goal. Up and running. That's a well-taken finish. Now, if Thiago scored that like he did yesterday, yesterday for Liverpool, uh, supposedly that's a fantastic, magnificent way to open your account. Yet for us, that's just another day in the office. Gonzalez Velasco doing really well to keep this in. Tried to hit it across goal. Bounced off Brown. Fell nicely to Hudson Doncaster. Keo was not ready for that at all. And he's just slotted that beautifully into the bottom corner. What a way to start the season. Excellent, excellent, excellent stuff. What was it five minutes on the clock? Six minutes on the clock. And we're 1-0 up already. And that is a nice looking ball, but just cut out there from stud home. Evans collecting the loose one. Gonzalez Velasco, who's definitely fitting these tactics a lot better now. Um, I don't quite know why he suddenly started fitting the tactics better. I know I did alter the player instructions uh, in last week's episode. But even then, I didn't think it would have that much of an impact this early. Seems to have, though. Which is awesome. Uh, he's making good runs. He kind of got the assist for the goal. Uh, oh, yeah, one other thing. So as well as the players, if they leave, they leave. Um, I also did have one last little look at the current abilities of the entire squad. And I did a rule of minus 10. So took their current ability, minus 10. Um, and that's their new current ability. Doesn't seem to have affected them too much. Did I mention that on Tuesday? I think I did mention that on... No, maybe I didn't mention I think I did it after Tuesday, actually. But I played a couple of matches with that, including the Dover match that we won 3-2. So I'd say the experiment works still. I just don't want... I don't mind players leaving. That's fine. But I just don't want football league clubs constantly coming in and, and offering deals to my players. Like, every single week. Oh, Jacob. Another good finish. Gonzalez Velasco with the assist again. But Andy Jacob scoring... In the opening game of the season. That's awesome to see. Good link-up play between the two wingers here as well. That is a really nice ball. Jacob's onside because he's behind the ball. And there are defenders there. But even if it was played earlier, he would have been onside. That's a really nice finish. You could see youth coming through and doing well. Um, but yeah, I did alter the, uh, the current ability just one more time. As you can see... I mean, the players' stats I left alone this time. I just changed their current ability. But as you can see, it's um, it's actually having an interesting effect still. I don't think it changes that much. The star rating of the players drops, but their actual abilities don't change at all. It's kind of a, a false thing, in my opinion. It really has no impact. Or at least next to no impact. So I might go look at individual stats again. We'll see. I keep saying we'll see to a lot of things. It's normally because I'm, I'm incredibly undecided and I don't really have anyone to ask what they think I should do. Yeah, Morley plays it back to King then. We're starting to control this game very, very nicely now. Extents with the long ball forward. That's a beautiful touch there as well from Gonzalez Velasco. He's got King in front of him. King does make the challenge. Clears it into touch. Gonzalez Velasco just looks like he's up for this season, which is awesome to see. Although that was a terrible header. Now we're kind of up against it. Devlin across to Shaw. I think we've got enough players back now. We should be fine. Uh, Cockrell on the ball. Back to Rodrigal. I think you say that. Is that how you say that? I think that's how you say that. We'll, we'll, uh, I was about to say we'll see again then. I was about to say it. No, we won't see. I'm going to assume you say it, Rodrigo. That's how I'm going to be saying it. Just hope he doesn't get the ball very much. 
Right, Cockrell on the ball. Stud home tracking. Stud home fouling. Yep, definitely fouling. That was a bit naughty there from Nathan. And Rodrigo with the free kick. So yeah, it's quieting down a little bit. I mean, we scored two very early goals. Don't get me wrong, I'm very happy with that. Um, I would like to see Stockfold get back into the game at some point, but um, I just I still don't really know where we are with our players in relation to everybody else. So we're in the FA Vars now, so we're going to be playing against teams in the leagues around us. We're also in a couple of other competitions where we're, we're going to get a bit more of an idea as to where we are in relation to other leagues. Um, but you've got to remember that all of the teams we're playing right now have new gen players. Um, so their stats aren't going to be as good as ours. The challenge isn't really going to be there still for another season or two. Um, we might have games where we just grab a last minute winner and we'll feel like we got away with one. But overall, I think we are still going to be the dominant team in the league. And that's fine. You know, that's something to be expected. Just kind of, I just keep wanting to say that, to get that across, just so um, people don't comment going, oh, you've made it too easy for yourself. Because I'm using real players that I've created myself, whereas the other teams are using new gens that are sort of more matched to the league. Uh, good evening, George. Good to see you, buddy. How are you doing? How's your weekend been? It's really hot outside. I'm really hot inside. Um, and hopefully there'll be a very, very good announcement tomorrow as well regarding lockdown. So which I'm very much looking forward to. For the first time in my life, I'm looking forward to watching a government briefing. I never thought I'd hear myself say those words either, but here we are. Ooh, Hudson Doncaster there. Putting the defender under a lot of pressure. Look how far forward our defence is as well. We're really taking the game to the opposition. Start home to Harding. Ah, oh, that's well cut out. So there, there are certain positions in the squad right now that I really don't want to lose. Striker, obviously, if Baker leaves, we are stuffed. As good as Jacob is, we have no backup. So at that point, I will be delving into the transfer market. Um, left wing is kind of one as well because we've got Akram. But apart from that, we've got Studholm and, and Reed, and that's it. Right-hand side, very similar. Gonzalez, Velasco, Roman, Lewis. Um, Afsar. Trying to remember who else. Hang on. <laughs> uh, Campwell, that was it. Um, but central midfield were a bit short, so we've got Gadger and we've got Batten. But if Harding leaves, then we're down to only having one option on the bench. So we have still got players like Stone who we could promote, but I think it's a bit early still for him. We'll see. It's a be again. I said it. I said it again. We'll see. Uh, it's an interesting challenge. It is an interesting challenge. It's one I'm very much up for. But uh, yeah, I think this is actually harder. Some people might think this is easier than playing with just generated players. But I find it's harder because you've got to balance your squad. And as I said, teams will just poach your best players constantly. And then it's a case of what do you do? It's been a good weekend. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Um, busy with uni work. Oh yeah. I don't miss that. I miss the idea of it being nearly summer. Uh, and not having much to do for two months or whatever it is, but I don't miss the like the crunch time that you have to do between now and then. Uh, also, yeah, I'm good. Like I said at the start, Steam is one, Newcastle one, my mum's team one as well, Chelsea. So it's the first time in God knows how long that all three of our teams have won on the same weekend. Hopefully, next season I'll be saying Hatfield won as well, and uh, it'll be the first time that all four teams have won on the same weekend. Um, but yeah. I said, looking forward to the announcement tomorrow. Hopefully, it means I'll finally get to see the missus again. Because it's been six months now since I last saw her properly. I mean, we talk every day. But still, it's not quite the same, you know. Um, so, looking forward to hearing what's announced tomorrow. And, yeah. Things are starting to get back to normal now. We'll never get back to a complete normality, I don't think. But we are getting closer. I think the uh, the mathematical term is trends towards zero, but never quite reaches it. But still, we'll make the most of it. I'm just looking forward to being able to go outside again without being paranoid. Kind of making up for lost time as well, you know. And as I said, in a couple of weeks' time, might get to go see Hatfield play for real. And that'd be awesome. I've got to remember to do the programs for that as well, though. But <laughs> still... It'll be nice. It'll be nice. 
I've been tasked with making a beaching report for Gareth's Transport Fever 2 series. Is that the... I take it that's not a uni project. That's just for fun, right? Sounds interesting, though. I mean, I wouldn't call it a beaching report. I'd call it a De Silva report in your case. But, yeah. Yeah, it's been... Um, so, my... Uh, my grandparents, I saw them last Monday. Not the Monday just gone, the one before that. But the reason we actually went down there was to fix shed roofs. So I spent all day on roofs in sun direct sunlight. And I think I got sunstroke. I definitely got sunburnt. And I killed my knees, my back, my hips, my ankles and everything. And had to stay two meters away from everyone. So that was fun. Um, but in a you know in a week's time, hopefully we'll uh, we'll be able to actually go and see them properly. So lots of people will be making up for lost time with their families. I think as long as everyone behaves themselves, still, I don't see it being an issue. One thing that's really bugged me recently, especially since pub gardens reopened, is seeing people um, like sitting on friends' laps and things like that. And that's not how you do this sensibly. That's what causes further lockdowns, and I I don't like that. So yeah, that that can go away. Um, but the rest of it, again, if if the numbers are accurate, then it's looking like it's going to be very good news tomorrow. So yeah, it'll be it'll be like flu. I'd say it's, it's more like advanced flu pneumonia type thing, where you know it's not completely well, it's not curable. Let's put it that way. It's not curable, um, and it's not something that you're completely immune to, but it will be less dangerous than it is currently. Just for fun. That's, yeah, I'll be interested in, in seeing what that's all about. Uh, I was thinking of doing something like that for the M4J network, but, I mean, it takes me long enough to do the things I've already said I'll do, never mind the things I haven't said I'll do. So that's probably not going to happen. I need to motivate myself to edit these network overview videos, and I've kind of got an idea to do a behind-the-scenes show of me maybe streaming it even um, to patrons or something like that just to try and kick my ass into gear and actually get it done a lot of people have been telling me to check out Gareth's stuff and I, I really don't know because I don't think we'll agree on much and he's way more qualified than I am but still I don't think we'll agree on much Uh, Blackpool FC fan channel. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Can you do youth players on it? Are you talking about football manager? Uh, yes. Uh, we have some of the uh, Hatfield, uh, the real life Hatfield youth players we haven't got yet, but I will be contacting John this week about that, along with a couple of other things that I've been um, thinking about. And yeah, the plan is to get all under 23s players and some of the br brightest prospects from the under 18s into the game. Uh, at least their name and maybe a, a close to as accurate as possible age. Not necessarily exactly, because there are some, you know, privacy laws or whatever, um, which I don't want to breach. But yeah, I want to I get as many people from the club as possible involved in this, because I think it's a really, really cool opportunity for them and for me. Um, I'm, I won't lie, I get quite a lot out of this as well. Um, but yeah, definitely. The youth players we've already had from last season, I'm going to keep them as are. But I will be creating new players for the real life youth squad for this season. And I will be allocating faces to them for now. And then hopefully getting real face faces for them in the future. Good run again from Gonzalez Velasco. He's just being held up here. Yeah, what's taken off him? Offside. I thought he'd given a penalty then. I was about to say that's a strange decision. But no, just offside. Uh, oh yeah, it was a good, good weekend overall for sport even. I was watching the F1 earlier. Uh, Spain is normally a terrible track for racing, but this this year they decided to, to make it very, very entertaining, which is awesome. I keep saying awesome. What am I, some 90s skateboarder? No, it was cool. Uh, it was good. It was encouraging. It was exciting to see an actual race today rather than just a procession for 66 laps. Can you play matches in it, or do you have to sim matches? No, I can, I'm can. i controlling the team, technically, so I can adjust instructions, for example. Like, uh, I mean, let's do one now. I've talked about it. Let's go with... 
much shorter passing. We'll go with a little bit of time wasting as well, because why not? I could also make subs, so I can click on a player and do substitute off, or give them a shout, that kind of thing. A two's just got himself booked, so actually I am going to give him an instruction to ease off tackles, just so he doesn't get a second yellow. But yeah, you, you, the, you can make it as advanced as you want this game, or you can make it as simple as you want. So... I could turn on the match plan at any point during this match and at that point I can just sit back and use my ready-made tactics and play out the game that way. And it will even do substitutions for me at the right times. Or I can do what I'm doing now which is actually manage the team. Now I don't normally manage the team when I play off, off camera. I tend to just set it up and let it run and just watch the matches as if it's on TV. Uh, but for the streams I thought that's not good content so I might as well manage the team and actually explain the decisions I'm making as I'm making them. Uh, in future, I want there to be active polls going on. So whether it's on the in the YouTube chat or whether it's in the Twitch chat, I'll have an active poll going. So say we're in the 75th minute, we're 1-0 down and I'm debating what tactic to go for. I might create a quick straw poll that people can go on and vote. And we can all manage the team as a, a collaborative effort. But right now, haven't quite got the uh, the audience or the fan base for that. So it's just it's me talking to myself saying, what shall I do? Shall I switch this? Go 4-4-2? Shall I go 4-3-3? Yada, yada, yada. But yeah, you can make this game as complicated or as simple as you want. If you just want to watch the games play out, that's fine. If you just want to hit a button that generates the result for you. And just, you just focus on transfers and stuff, that's fine. A lot of people have been talking about having a director of football mode where you just play as a DOF. But you can do that already it has manager next to your name but you can actually simulate games and just pretend you're the director of football and focus on signings only you still have to set up some basic tactics and things but it's not it's not that big a deal i also know what i want to do in my life i want to be a python developer how good is your python because mine was terrible when i tried it it's so it's similar enough to java that you think oh i could do this and then you realize it's also very different from what you expect it to be um, I've read a lot of things online about similar things. People saying it looks like Java, but it lulls you into a false sense of security. That's a good ball. Good touch as well from Jacob. Is he going to square it? No, he goes for goal himself. Yeah, I've used a bit of Python. I need to motivate myself to get into coding again as well, because uh, I tend to do things just enough so I remember what I'm doing. Whether it's updating my website, whether it's creating little apps, that kind of thing. And there is something I'm supposed to be working on and I keep like putting it off. But I will get on working it uh, on it again soon. Which is a pretty awesome project. Um, again, I always say next week, next week. And then it ends up not being next week. But this one, I think it will be next week, actually. Because, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of time sensitive as well, so... Interesting volley there from Nash. Don't know whether he was trying to stop the throw-in or not, but he certainly didn't prevent the goal kick. Uh, okay, I feel dense now. What's OOP? Creating a warehousing system, is that, with OOP? I like Java. I actually... So when I did um, Dreamweaver stuff back when I was at uni, I hated the fact that... Like, you could see what you were doing with the live preview, but there were also times where you couldn't really test it until you'd finished a whole lot, and then you'd click test, and it would just come up saying error, and you didn't know where the error was. But the more I've worked on coding, the more that you, you start to see the previews and how things change according to what settings you put in and things like that. And I'm more into it now than I was. It's kind of like when you... Uh, so when I used to do engineering, we used to do coding for CNC machines. And that was literally a case of, we had no simulation software. So it was, you'd write the code for the CNC machine. You'd write the tool paths, you put in all the coordinates, the tool transfers, things like that. And the only time you got to see whether it worked or not, was when you put it into the machine and hit start. And there were 20 of us in our class. And mine was the only one that actually made something. And even then, it was nothing like what it was meant to be. 
Uh, and because you only see, say it takes you two hours to write the code, you only see whether it works or not when you hit start. And if you make a mistake, you could spend another two hours fixing it. And that's four hours at that point, and you still don't have a product. Whereas when you're coding, you can kind of do it in like half hour increments. You can do this, 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 and then you hit test. Sometimes you get, so I use Visual Studio now for um, coding rather than Dreamweaver because it's just nicer. And uh, it's it's easier just to have a Chrome window open with your, your project and you just hit refresh. So you, you make a change, you hit save, you refresh it, and then you, you see what it looks like. Object-orientated programming. Okay. I might need to look into that. I might be looking for a Python developer at some point. It depends. Or at least Java. I used Python for when I was... I did a uni project involving Minecraft. And I used Python for a mod. Um, and the tutorials I was using were like two years out of date. So nothing worked. And I basically had to learn Python from scratch. So I learned what I needed to do in order to make it work. And I think that's why I don't like Python much. is because I haven't really learned the basics. I just learned what I needed to at the time. If I go back and relearn it, I'd probably do better. God, Harding's just kicked Morley there. That was a bit nasty. Also realise we're, what, 31 minutes into this stream and I've very, very rarely talked about football. <laughs> we are here for football after all, people. I don't know. I like I like having an active chat, so if anyone wants to contribute, that's fine. I'll talk about anything, me. Anyone who's watched my content, you'll know I go off on huge tangents sometimes. Yeah, I never thought I'd be a coder. And I still don't think I am a coder, but I do coding. Occasionally. I've built my own websites. I've built, what, three websites myself, and I've contributed to... No, four websites I've built myself. And I've contributed to, like, seven or eight others in, in the past. So I've got some experience. I'm a better community manager than I am a web developer, though. That's for sure. And I'm a very good director of media. Gonzalez Velasco. There's the header. That's made the highlights now. <laughs> Me just going, I'm a very good director of media. And then he buries the header in the bottom corner there. Here we go then. Nash with the throw to stud home. Spins his man. Crosses it in. Look at that. I like those cushion headers. You can see he's like properly setting himself up just to guide it into the bottom corner there. Very well taken header. And that's 3-0 after 34 minutes. Stop fold, struggling a little bit. OOP is often used in game development, not just games. So yeah, it's, 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 um, that's the other thing I found out working for a game developer for a while is, is how similar some of the coding actually is to web development, basically. So you, effectively what you're doing is creating a, a, an object in a virtual environment and then defining that object. So you could tell... Uh, in the case of a website, you can tell your web page to show a square uh, using HTML. And then you use CSS to say the square is going to be this wide, this tall, this color, with this colored stroke. Um, and then it'll be positioned, you know, seven pixels in from the left and four pixels from the bottom. That kind of thing. So it's kind of like, I always see it as a little bit like speaking French. Where, so in English, you'll say something like the blue chair, whereas in French, you say the chair blue. And that, that's kind of how coding feels. You, you say the object first, and then you say how you want the object to look. Once you kind of understand the basics like that, it, it makes it a lot clearer. But that's that's really watering it down. Um, you know, you, you, you have a lot of complicated parts as well. Like uh, Java, when you start bringing Java into the party, and especially when you try and use JSON files, Oh man, I wasted about a month of my life in my final year at uni trying to get YouTube to generate a JSON file for my website. Gave up in the end. I can't remember what, I think I just left it blank. My current website uses a widget, uh, which you may or may not have seen the name of, um, which I've also had to upgrade. I love this, by the way. This is such a first world problem, but I just love it. This series that I'm playing now, Football Manager, Real Hatfield Town, generated so much uh, interest in my website 
along with a couple of episodes of OpenTTD that I uploaded a few weeks ago, that it actually it increased my website traffic so high that the widget I was using, I could no longer use the free tier because my website traffic was too high. So I now have to pay for a widget because you guys have been visiting my website so much, which I'm very grateful for, by the way. Don't get me wrong. But um, proper, proper first world problem. You guys are costing me money, man. What can I say? Is Gonzalez Velasco going to get booked for that challenge? Nope. I think he's got away with that. Awesome stuff. Creating a class and then defining what it does using variables and initializing it. Yes, that is it. You explain it much better than I can. So I've, I've barely scratched the surface with Python, but I'm quite in-depth with Java. So I imagine they're very similar still. But something I'm working on now it involves a lot of PHP stuff as well, which I have no idea how to do. So that's going to be fun trying to learn that. I'm still very much a mechanically minded person. I do not, I don't see circuits. I'm not like, you know, Neo in the Matrix. Um, I prefer valves and gears and things like that, not ones and zeros. So it's it's been a, an interesting learning curve, and I get very frustrated very quickly, and I do tend to shout a lot into the abyss. When I can't work things out, a two needs to be careful here. Yeah, force him back. That's it. That's Evans' ball. And he's just giving it straight back to him. I'm going to give him a bit of praise still. We're not doing that much good right now, but we are 3-0 up, so I can't complain too much. Oh, for goodness sake, take a touch. There we go. Bring it down. Under control. Now let's build an attack. Gonzalez Velasco winning the corner. That was good defending there from King. Perhaps the cross could have come in. There wasn't that much to aim for in the middle. So I can kind of understand why he didn't do it. Yeah, PHP. Talking to databases. Getting a website to talk to a database and vice versa. Um, yeah. Interesting. That's all I can say. Ooh. Another cracking finish. Why has Gonzalez Velasco suddenly decided he wants to play again? At the end of last season, I will admit, I was prefer uh, preferring to play Chowdhury in that role because he was just better. This season, good flick on there from Hudson Doncaster. Look at that, he's just put his foot through that. Yes, login systems. That's what I'm using it for. Login systems and also storing information on a database. So I've been, I've been cheating a lot with my web development at the moment. I've been using Adobe XD to design web pages, um, wireframes. And then there's a plugin for that that can turn it into an HTML file and a CSS file and a JS file. And um, unfortunately, this is where it sucks me in a little bit because um, the CSS file, I don't understand half of it. Uh, so I wanted to tinker it and turn it into just a template file that all my pages can then um, refer to. I don't know how easy that's going to be now. And the, the JavaScript file I've not even opened because I'm terrified of it. Congrats. It worked, yeah. My, uh, my apps didn't really work very well at uni. I got them to look nice though, so I think that's why I passed. I designed a really cool app. I never actually made it, but I created wireframes for it. Um, for if you stay at a certain brand of hotel in London, uh, you could get like a QR code. You know, like you have the, the uh, room service menu and things like that. On that pamphlet, there'd be a QR code and you'd scan it with your phone and you would download an app where you would put in the location of your hotel and it will tell you all the tourist attractions and parks and anything that may be of interest to you within a five minute walk or a 10 minute walk. And it would show your hotel and then it would show like a radius around it for the, say you wanted to do things within a 20 minute walk, you could put that in and it would show you all the attractions within that area. You could organize it by price, you could organize it by uh, type of attraction. It's really, really cool. And I kind of wish I'd pitched it because I might have been able to sell it to them for a lot of money, but never mind. I think it actually exists now as well, which is the sad thing. Not that company, but another company I think have done it. That's when I couldn't code, though. That was in my second year, first semester, I did that. 
I think it was... No, it might have been final year, actually. So I should have been able to code it. Anyway. Evans with the free kick. He's going to stick it in the middle. Oh, the keeper came for it and missed it. Ha. <laughs> I appreciate the offer. As I said, there's a project I'm working on at the moment. It's, it's me, my dad, and my brother are working on it. And um, it's kind of a hush-hush project at the moment. So in the future, I would like to bring some people on board to help with the bits that we struggle with. But right now, we're kind of doing feasibility tests, which are looking very promising, by the way. But um, yeah, we're, we're kind of keeping it to ourselves right now because it's a cutthroat world out there, believe me. Good defending a two, stepping in front of the man there. Considering he's on a yellow card, he's been putting in some pretty decent challenges since. Oh, if Jacob had been on the run there as well, that would have been an excellent pass. He could still force the mistake. Stodholm getting pitched in as well. Hudson Doncaster has a succulent first touch. Finding Studholm. Uh, running into each other there. Harding going back to Sadler, forward to Hammond. Nash with the up and under. Which again, I thought... I actually think Hudson Doncaster perhaps could have chased that one down. But hey-ho. Alright, Nash to Hudson Doncaster. Goes for the cross. Blocked for another throw-in. How are we doing on the clock? Ah, we're coming up to half-time. Three minutes added. We're just entering the 46th minute now. In fact, there we are in the 46th minute. It's been a good first half, I must say. 4-0. Brace from uh, from Gonzalez Velasco. One from Hudson Doncaster. And a nice goal from Jacob. Hopefully Jacob builds on that. Oh, and a header from Harding. Also just over the bar. This could be a very good season. I can see it already. If we keep this squad together. If the squad starts to break up, we might struggle a little bit. But I'm hoping the tweaks I've made might put a stop to that. We'll have to see how that goes. I know I said we'll see again. I know. I'll, I'll create a jar or something. Every time I say we'll see, I'll put money in the jar. Maybe pay for a giveaway with it. I don't know. Right, Sadler heads it to Hammond. Across the stud home. Hudson Doncaster across to Harding. This is lining up nicely for a shot. Oh, Gonzalez Velasco going for his hat trick there. Behind for a corner. We're coming up very close now to half time. Just a minute left on the clock. Hudson Doncaster, he's curled that one in. Stud home was going to get that by the looks of it. Defender needed to be called upon. Hammond with the ball out wide. I believe Hudson Doncaster is on side and he's crossed it in again. That was a good ball in. More good defending. Cockrell with the header away. Evans just, yeah, leave it to the keeper. No rush. No panic. How are the players doing condition-wise as well? Pretty good, actually. Pretty good. Hammond, I'm guessing he's looking complacent. Yeah. Yeah. So I might have to give him a talking to at half time. But everyone else looking really, really good. Um, yeah, I've got no complaints. I'm finding it hard to find things to complain about, to be honest. We're just playing really well. The million pound giveaway. <laughs> oh, if I had a million quid to do a giveaway with, I would not be streaming this right now. Believe me. I'll be in some studio somewhere presenting a real life football match with Hatfield. Gonzalez Velasco to Evans. You can see the time wasting going on a little bit there. But yeah, 4 0 at half time. What a half. We'll look at the analytical data. I'll ignore the player statistics because we pretty much know what that's going to be. So again, Hammond hanging back a little bit, but everyone else doing very, very well. I kind of want. So this is where it gets a bit tricky. I might swap the two central midfielders around because of this. I want Gonzalez Velasco to be out wider. Studholm's always going to come inside. That's his thing. Now, normally we'd have Argent running the overlaps. So that's not a, an issue. But Carter can't come left here. He can only go right. But I would want the central midfielder to fill this gap if Carter goes out wide right there. Maybe get Jacob a bit further forward as well. But overall, I'm encouraged. That was a really, really good first half. 
I'm going to turn the time wasting off again. I'm also going to turn... Um, let's go with distribute to playmaker. We'll keep with the throw. And then here... Yeah, that's much higher. That's higher. That's good. So I did remember to change that the other day. Um, we'll run at defense now as well. Why not? Let's take the game to him. Very pleased so far. Second half. Let's go. Now, if I've got on the bench that I could bring on at right back. Maybe Tuttle. It would be cool here if it actually showed me what their positions were. So, Tuttle can play right back. Maybe not as good as Evans, but accomplished enough. I think I'm going to make that sub now. And it's not... It's nothing against a two. But he's on that yellow card, and that makes me nervous. Particularly as they were making a lot of attacks down our right-hand side. So we'll do the sensible thing here, and we'll we'll, um, we'll give it to a rest. Rodrigo with the ball across the top. Sadler, I mean, he could have just brought that down. That was such an unnecessary clearance. Just absolutely hoofed it. There's Tuttle coming on for a two. I have no idea who my next change is going to be. I'm assuming there will be another change because I want to prevent injuries and stuff. We've had a pretty heavy preseason as well. Lots of matches. So I imagine there will be a point where players start to look a bit jaded. I did rotate the squad as much as possible. I don't think we ever had the same starting lineup twice. But even so. Now Studholm there could have perhaps done a little bit more to keep hold of that ball. we got Nash on the throw anyway. I, There could be a whole team of scientists working around the clock and they wouldn't be able to tell you what the hell that was. He's just thrown it to no one. That's, yeah. Are we feeling that generous today, lads? We're just going to throw it to no one. Good play from Hammond. Hammond is a, a real linchpin in that midfield. I'll be gutted if he leaves. If he leaves, I'm going to search high and low to find a, a, a suitable replacement. A ball-winning midfielder is so valuable at any level of football. Having someone who can just comfortably win the ball back and then distribute it to a teammate. It's like gold dust. So, so important. I, I build a lot of my tactics around that principle as well. Uh, so, we're 49th minute we're in now. Still 4-0. The front... Uh, the three attacking midfielders. One of them, I think, is going to be off next. Won't be anytime soon. We'll, we'll wait more towards the hour. But yeah, it'll be one of them. Maybe bring one of the twins on to play the wing. Probably for stud home. Because, I mean, Gonzalez Velasco is still on a hat trick. Maybe having a left footer on the left-hand side would be good as well. Because you see there, Studholm's running in field still. And okay, he's winning set pieces for us. But we're not exactly making ground down the left-hand side. He relies on cutting inside a little too much. And even Nash there. He, he, really here, he wants to play it down the line. But there's no one to play it to. There we go. The one time Studholm actually breaks out. And he wins another free kick because he tried to run in field. Threw it to his imaginary friend. Now, sometimes in this game, kits do get uh, glitchy. And you either don't see them at all. So I've had invisible players. In fact, season one, we had Sadler running around with no um, no shirt and no shorts. Just see-through. You could see the pitch through him. Um, or you get ones where they wear the ref's kit for some reason. So maybe, yeah, you might be onto something. There was an invisible player. I mean, there wasn't. But let's pretend there was. Stranger things have happened. Evans, good ball to Gonzalez Velasco. Harding. First time pass there. A little too much on it there for Carter. Gregson knocking, knock, knocking it back to Brown. I can't speak today. I can't speak any day. Well, I don't know why I make it sound like it's specific to certain days. I just can't speak. I might as well own up to it at this point. 
Alright, is he going to close it down here, Gonzalez Velasco? He is, you know. And if Hudson had been, uh, Hudson Doncaster had been on his toes a little bit more there, we might have been able to win it back. Instead, that's well cut out from Sadler. Finds Hammond. He goes long towards Jacob. So we've still got the Baker tactic set up, despite the fact there's no Baker. That might be something I'll work on more this season, is um, sort of tweaking the, the tactics slightly. So if a player is missing, who's crucial to the tactic working, we have a backup plan for whoever fills in. So in this case, Jacob isn't as tall as Baker. He's not as good in the air. So we'll cut out the long balls a lot more, which is something I've been trying to do anyway. Um, but there might be ways specifically to, to tailor it to individual players. That was a bit of a miscommunication there, which we somehow salvaged. There is some good football being played in this match. Not just by us. They're putting together some nice stuff too. Start home there. Oh, he tried to play a slide rule. I thought he was going to shoot. I was hoping he would shoot. Because that would have been an absolute barnstormer if that had gone in. Now Harding with the foul. Not the worst place to give away a free kick in, I suppose. Oh, excuse me, stifling sneezes now as well. Oh, okie dokie. So a throw in to stop fold. Which one am I out of these two? I'm the one on the left, am I? Oh, I'm sat down. I was about to say, that's the linesman I was looking at there. Oh, and a foul from Carter. Lovely. So we're committing a lot of fouls now. Maybe, can I tell them to ease off tackles? Is that a thing? Uh, out of possession. Stay on feet. There we go. Just try and commit... I won't even say stay on feet. I'll just say nothing there. Use your own head, but don't just dive in like that because you will give away a lot of fouls. These are things I want to kind of nip, nip in the bud now before it becomes a major issue. That's a nice pass out to stud home. Good ball forward to Jacob. He's kept hold of his possession as well. That's good. Stud home again. And he's won another free kick. Again, I think he just wanted to run inside there and he couldn't. So he, he plays for the set piece instead. Do I still have that turned on, actually? That might be... Uh... No, I turned it off. Yeah, so there's no reason for him to... I don't think he's looking for the foul then. I think he's just fouled a lot. But I'd like to see him actually try and stay on his feet and create a attack still. That's my preferred thing there. Holding up their guy there, and Tuttle should get this, no problem. Play it back to the keeper, maybe? Yep. You've got all the time in the world, Kieran, so there's no rush there. Got Nash out wide, that's a beautiful pass. I love that, outside of the foot curl as well. Oh, chef's kiss. You don't see goalkeepers playing passes like that very often. And Hudson Doncaster, a little bit of a dupe there to get away. Not quite sure what that pass was, he duped us all with that. And then cleared. They're playing nice passes were there someone on the end of them. But because there isn't, they just look really dumb. Like, what the hell were you thinking kind of dumb. Harding with the crossing opportunity. He's taken it into the box instead. Now he crosses it towards Jacob, but headed away. Again, if Baker was there, we might be looking at a different outcome. Evans with the ball forward and again Baker playing that would have been a different outcome I think he would have won that one we missed Baker is what I'm getting at with this we do miss Harry what music's this is this from uh... yeah Kerbal Space Program didn't recognise it then I actually think the music is too quiet on these streams people are probably wondering what the hell I'm talking about when I talk about is the music too loud because you probably can't hear it Let me know. Is the music too loud? Is it just right? Can you hear the music? If Obviously, if you can't hear the music, then it's too quiet. Alright, Kelly to Rodrigo. Easy for Sadler there. Finding stud home. Again, he cuts inside and there isn't really anyone there. I'm going to look at that tactic as well. Maybe for Tuesday's episode. 
and actually in investigate how often does Studholm hold on to the ball and how often does he lose it? Because I think it's to do with teammate placement as well as his own choices. So right now he's he's cut inside. He's swapped places with Hudson Doncaster basically, but he's ending up. He's being forced backwards slightly and then further across the field to the point he's almost on Gonzalez Velasco's toes. And that's that's just counterproductive for me. I can hear it not loud. Okay. Some tracks are louder than others, so you will hear those above others. But that's fine. It's just meant to be background music, so if I don't talk for a little bit for any reason, then there's something happening in the background still. Jacob win that. Jacob win that. Okay, Evans win that. Nope. Okay. Tuttle win that. Harding win that. Harding won that and then lost that. Someone win it, please. Sadler, thank you. I don't even care that you just kicked it to no one. Just to win it back in that situation, stop the counter-attack. That's good. Why is their right back wearing the number three as well? Are they playing a... They might be playing a back three, actually. He might just be the right side of centre-back. Or maybe a back five. I don't know. What are we doing with the time? We're coming up to the hour mark now, then. So I am going to bring Studholm off. And I'm going to bring Akram on to play as an actual left winger. Try and open ourselves up a little bit more on this left-hand side. Uh, their right-backs had it a bit easy. Getting forward and, um, and defending. So we're going to change that up. And again, it's nothing against Studholm. I did say a while ago I'm going to play him more on the right-hand side, I think, this season. Um, just because I don't think he's fully utilised on the left. I don't want him to be marked out of games. Because then you're really not getting the best out of him. You watch. You'll, you'll either score now or you'll set one up just before he goes off. Ah, see, again, he should have run wide there and he ran central. Oh, Hudson Doncaster on his weaker foot. Almost making a chance. Evans with the ball forward. Jacob with the volley. Oh, Imagine if that had gone in. Offside, so it wouldn't have counted. But imagine. He was... Actually, was he offside? Hudson Doncaster was onside running in behind. But I don't know if Jacob was off or not. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say he was. But I really am. I'm, I'm not sure. Tuttle there with the header. Something else I'm going to work on is match plans for the other two formations we've got as well. Because um, one thing I might do is set up more for 4-4-2 in certain matches and play two strikers. We are going to need another striker for that. So I might have to delve into the transfer market a little bit. I've got my eye on a couple of players. I'm going to build a spreadsheet at some point as well. I think I've said this before. Where I'm going to track the player's development and also have like a transfer wish list. So when I go into a transfer window, particularly when the game... Um, you go into the new transfer uh, I don't know what you'd call it really the new transfer UI let's say um, you have a lot I'll have a much better idea as to who I'm looking for before we even get to that stage so I can just go out and tell my scouts who to look for we'll see how well that works it's very nerdy if you're a football fan you'll probably get it a lot more than if you're not I like spreadsheets that's all I can say. Ooh, I think he missed that. I think Hudson Doncaster missed the ball there. Evans again with the long ball. Gonzalez Velasco running onto it. Was he offside or was it a foul? He was offside. Oh, Jacob was offside. Ah, see, Jacob muscled the defender out of the way. So, yeah, that makes sense. Long ball forward. Nash with the header to Chowdhury. Who is actually cutting inside himself somewhat. Uh, he is playing in the right position, right? Yeah, winger attack. Oh, there we go. Crosses it in. Headed away from Jacob. What are your instructions? Yeah, no, you're set up. You're set up pretty much how I want you. Alrighty. Well, I'm not quite sure why uh, he was starting to run inside there. Oh no, it does happen from time to time, of course. Hammond with the foul. He's looking tired out there now as well. 
I think he's going to get booked now. I will give the team some praise still. Just because we're not playing badly. We're not playing great, but we're not playing badly. There you go. They're all happy. So it's going to be either Hammond or Hudson Doncaster who comes off. Normally I lean more towards Hudson Doncaster in these scenarios because he's he's more susceptible to injury. But Hammond is now on a yellow card. And this is where a viewer poll would be useful. Because I'm torn. So on the bench we've got Gadger who, who most likely will come on for either. Actually we've got Batten as well. Hmm. If we took off Hudson Doncaster, we could just switch to a top, top two, and bring uh, Afsar on. Hmm. I have to make my mind up quickly. Akram running in behind. Is he going to get there? He is. And he's crossed it on his right foot, but straight to the keeper. I was expecting him there to cross that first time on his left. And again, ignore. So Jacob and Nash. Uh, no, not even Jacob and Nash. Jacob, his face is his face. That will be his face from now on. But Nash and Chowdhury, both of them, plus Reed and Gadger, they've got faces because they were technically regens that I renamed. So when I put the faces in, that's what happened. But I will eventually replace them with their actual faces. So if you're watching and you're confused as to why uh, <laughs> why they don't look like they do in real life, that's why. Extents. That is a fantastic... That's Edison levels of goalkeeper passing there. That's a beautiful ball. Chowdhury now running in behind. Shaw struggling to keep up. Chowdhury takes it right to the byline, pulls it back. Again, Baker might have got that, but Jacob, no. He's getting himself in those areas, at least. Just got to work on him winning the headers. Ooh, Nash diving in, missing the ball, though. I think it's going to be Hudson Doncaster I bring off. He's committing fouls now as well. I'm going to tell uh, you... What else can I play you as? Deep line playmaker, maybe? Just to tell you to ease off tackles. Dribble less. All this stuff's fine. All this stuff's fine. Hold position is also fine. Cool. I think I am going to switch to a two up top. Just for an extra man in the box. That wasn't good play. Lost the ball there very easily. Win that Evans. Nice. And Chowdhury does get there. Good. And he's won the foul, has he? No. Jacob plays on. Harding now. Skips past his challenge too. This is what I want to see more of. Hudson Doncaster in the box. Gonzalez Velasco on a hat trick. Oh, he just couldn't get his foot through it properly. All right, I'm going to switch into the tactics screen here now. We're going to move Hudson Doncaster alongside Jacob. We'll have him on the right-hand side here because then we're going to bring Afsar on for Carter. And I think, is it a pressing forward? The Twins play best as, set to attack. Show me what you've got. Uninterested, wow, okay. It's nice that, isn't it? Charming. See how uninterested you are when you're dropped, son. Hmm? That's not happening. He's one of our best players. But, you know, he doesn't need to know that right now. Gonzalez Velasco finds Harding. I would have played that to Tuttle. That pass was a little too late. Tuttle, I think, is actually offside. Yes. Too late. Dawdled. Should have played it first time. Can't wait forever. Oh. Yeah. For a second there, I thought I hit start streaming on my second OBS, but no, I did hit recording, so that's fine. Alright, Allenson with the throw. Throws it to 
uh, Erdogan. Is that how you say that? Evans with the misplaced volley there. I think it was on his weaker foot, though. I guess that one's for the cameras. He loves just hoofing it, doesn't he? Absolutely loves it. He can't get enough of the hoof. Harding doing well to hold up the play there, too. Long ball over the top. Cockrell gets there. Offside flag up anyway. I thought he was going to shoot first time then. We might have been in trouble had he done that. So we've got 20 minutes to go. The Chowdhury twins linking up. Akram to Afsar. Now Gonzalez Velasco running the overlap. Tries to pull it back. Corner a kick. We get to see the set pieces coming into play now. Who's taking it? Harding. Why is Akram not taking it? That was a poor corner. Hang on, that's bugging me. Can I check that here? Why is Akram? Corners, right side. Oh, he's right down the bottom for some reason. I'll change that. What about this side? Yeah, that side's fine. Ooh, uh. That's all I can say to that. Ooh, uh. Harding offside. Man, there's so many offsides in this game. What are we up to with offsides? 7-1. to one. Where are we at with throw-ins, actually? 20-14. to 14. There's been 34 throw-ins in this game. Oh, man. That is less than previously. I'll give it that. Normally, we'd have like 35 just ourselves. But still... I want the ball to be on the pitch, between the white lines, not in the stand somewhere being retrieved from the burger bar. Come on, people. Oh, do I get an attendance as well? Does that show? Oops. Got my cursor in all the wrong places. Uh, I could probably, if I change you to... Oh, no, maybe not. Okay, I don't know what the attendance is. We'll find out after. It's fine. Devlin running after it. Nicely done. Just run out of play for us. 17 minutes to go. Nash with the throw in. Hammond going to support, but he throws it to Sadler instead. Nice little one two, though. Plays it down the line towards Jacob, who again couldn't win the header. Hammond going in a little bit firm there. That's oh, good play from Nash. Stepped across his man there, forced him to play the pass inside. And then good cut out from Hammond. Even if he did just hoof it out for yet another throw in. At least it's not a goal attack from them. Devlin with the cross. There's a nice volley from Erdogan. Straight down extends his throat. What is the shots? That was their first shot of the game. Also their first shot on target. So there's that. That was a hospital pass and a half from Akram as well. I hate those passes where they're like outside of the foot, but they don't really breach their target. It's so frustrating. Why even do that? All right, we forced the throw there. We are officially ganging up on them. Nash with the throw to Akram. Jacob running around the corner. Play it to Jacob. Play it to Jacob. Yeah, see, that's that's not progress. I don't think we've done anything good with the ball there. We could have played it to Jacob and then done an, uh, an underlap run, but no. What have I got for Jacob's instructions? get him to roam a little bit. Explore the pitch. Akram with the ball in. Flicked on towards the far post, but well cleared. Both twins there standing near the ball as well, so I can't even say who's who. <laughs> Normally I go by where they are on the pitch, but yeah, can't do that there. It was definitely Akram who took it though, because he's left-footed. Nash with the throw to Jacob, who finds Akram, evades the challenge and picks out Harding. Forward to Afsar. Gonzalez Velasco now. They're all right-footed, so they can't do anything on their left. 
That is a free kick one there by Harding. Another set piece that we perhaps could have done without. I don't think there's a shot on here, but we'll see. Akram running up, slams it into the wall. That wasn't troubling anyone. I'm surprised Nash didn't just patronisingly let that go out for a throw in then. Extends with the ball forward to Nash. Great one too between the two of them there. Bit of a lunge there from Allenson, but he did get the ball. Now it's another throw in. We must be in the 30s now. Still only 24? Really? So we've had 13 shots, 7 on target, so it's still a f basically 50% ratio, which is pretty, pretty poor. Oh, Horn's gone down injured. They're going to play the ball out. Probably cramp. First game of the season, you tend to get a lot of cramp. Here comes the physio. Any second now. Just drag him off the pitch, for Christ's sake. Okay, now he's injured. I don't know what the physio's done to him, but he didn't have that plus above his head just now. He's done one of those to this hurt and then accidentally broken his leg, hasn't he? Crack. Alright, he's limping off. I think they've made all three subs, haven't they? So if he can't continue, they're down to ten men. Not that we need that advantage. Mind you, we've got players struggling as well. The only one who isn't struggling right now is Nash. And just for the end of this game, I'm going to put Nash as a complete wing back. Just get him up the pitch a bit more. We need someone to do those overlapping runs. Uh, Kraus back to Keo, Kicks it forward. This should be Nash's all day long and is. Hammond to Akram. And again, he wants to run inside with it. He does pick out Jacob. Back to Akram. Good first touch from him. Tried to cross it in low. And cleared out for another throw. The, uh, the tactics should kick in now with old Nash getting further forward. Let's go with a bit more of a demand more from them. Just want a good exciting end to a match for once. Nash's corner. Too much on that but Gonzalez Velasco will recycle. And that's another corner. Which Akram should be running to take this time and is. I need to whip that in. That was a good shape on it. We do have to get back now though. Hammond actually doing some good cover in there. Oh, Gonzalez Velasco nearly getting across that one as well. Harding again. Just forcing them backwards. That's all you have to do. You don't necessarily have to win the ball back. you just got to force them to turn around and go the other way. Can't score if the ball's in their half. And that, I think, is our throw. Yes. So, Tuttle to take. As Afsar running out wide there. Gonzalez Velasco in field. Whipped in from Tuttle. Over the heads of everybody. Akram following it up. See how much further forward Nash is now as well. So, some of the players responded well. Sadler, Evans and Akram responding well to the demand more. Everyone else not very happy with me. I'm not here to make friends. Although it would be nice. Alright, Nash. Play around the... Oh. He could have played that up the line then. He had Akram running in behind. That would have been glorious. Play it down the line. Whip it in. We probably would have scored another goal. Alas, not to be. And Evans came for that one and got nowhere bloody near it. Sadler saving blushes, finding Evans. Back to Tuttle. He goes forward. Again, not that measured. 
I don't think the long balls are necessary. We don't need to pitch these long balls. That's a good interception, though. And he plays it up forward to Afsar, but on his wrong side. That needed to go down his right-hand side, not his left. So where are we at? I've got seven minutes to go then. 84th minute we're in now. I can't see Stockfold scoring. But I have said that before and it's come back to bite me. But I think we can see this out with a clean sheet. Which would be a really good encouraging start. I've tipped us to go up as champions in the press conference. So pressure's on to do that. But I, I genuinely think this, this squad can win another two or three leagues before we start to struggle. It's normally the Isthmian League where you start to hit the wall. And if we can get into the National League South, full of confidence still and winning every title, then we might be able to make a beeline straight for the Football League. I don't want to get caught in non-league for a couple of seasons like I did in last year's save. Last year's save, incidentally, I'm in the Premier League now. I, I just got promoted, finished second. Had to rely on Villa and Reading both losing on the final day to finish second, but we made it. Uh, and we've got a pretty decent squad. Sands, centre-back... Uh, because I forgot both my first choice centre-backs were in on loan. And the Premier League rules is you can only loan two players. And I had like eight players on loan, so I couldn't renew them. So I had to wait for the loan to expire and then try and sign them again. And then my wage budget and my transfer budget went on signing some new attackers because we were a bit short on goals. And I really didn't budget it very well. Uh, so I managed to get one centre-back in from Liverpool on loan. Uh, that looked like a foul on Jacob, but we're playing on it seems. But I couldn't do anything about the second one. So right now I've got some academy graduate playing centre-back while I try and solve that problem. And the transfer window is fast closing. So um, pressure is... Well, let's just put it this way. I don't think I'm going to have two centre-backs this season. But I got the left-back, which is something else I was struggling with. He was my other lone player. So I've got some positions filled, at least. Evans, that's a nice ball. And Afsar with the cross. Offside, though. That was Afsar offside as well. We're, we're getting better about the offsides at least. So there's also that. I, I do like the fact that I can see the improvements. Every time I tell a player to do something new, within a game or two's time, I can actually see them trying to do it. So there's, there's definitely progress being made on the field. We're an invincible team still. We didn't lose at all last season. We drew once and we won all the other games. So there's, there's, no, there's no danger there. But it would be nice if um, we just stopped giving the ball away all the time. Maybe I am being picky because I can see the whole game. Normally you only see highlights. So you don't see yourself give the ball away that often. When you watch the full 90 minutes you definitely see it more. Probably that, to be honest. I'm just picky. I'm very critical, as you all know. When it comes to football, I'm hypercritical. I've also got to remember that I'm seeing a vantage point. Especially when I watch real football. I'm seeing the match from a vantage point that no one on the pitch has. Uh, so they might not necessarily see the passes. Right, into the final couple of minutes of the game. Evans with another huge hoof, which was totally unnecessary, but he did it anyway. It's good to see fans in the ground as well. This must be... I reckon we got a couple of hundred fans here, maybe. I think the, the Stevenage game, we had 600 people, 300 of which were Stevenage fans. It's good to get a crowd in, at least. We get some money from that. That's a nice pass. Go on, Afsar. Go on, Afsar. He's fouled. Is that going to be a red? Was he last man? Or was the other defender going to be able to cover? Just a yellow. Okay, I think that's a fair... I think that's a fair one. He wasn't exactly sprinting away. Free kick opportunity. Akram to take. Over the wall. Oh, too central. Way too central. Imagine if that had gone in, though. I think I would have just absolutely lost it. Just thinking, do we have any goal of the season contenders in this game? Probably not. Gonzalez Velasco's second goal was good, but I wouldn't describe it as a goal of the season. 
Hudson Doncasters came from a defensive mix-up. Jacobs was pretty good. Maybe. I don't I doubt it though. The header was also pretty good from Gonzalez Velasco, but I wouldn't say it was goal of the season worthy. Great play from Hammond again. He's been on a yellow card for so long, and yet he's just kept his composure, kept his head, put in some decent challenges still. He hasn't stopped it from um he hasn't let it stop himself winning the ball. That's what I was trying to say. But again, I can't speak, so. Good header there from Sadler. Finding Akram. Jacob coming out wide for it. Again, he could have used him there. Didn't need to hold on to it. And that throw-in. In fact, he's conceded the throw-in. It came back off him. So we've, we've got nothing out of that. Where's the button that just says pass it, you fool? I'll be smacking that right now. Oh yo yo! I don't think that was particularly well played either. He, he's trying to win it back. I'll give him that. Bit heavy touch though. He's young. He's improving. He does get the benefit of the doubt again for that. Alrighty, Kelly. What are we up to? We're in injury time. Three minutes were indicated. We're into the second one already. It's me not paying attention to the clock properly. Sadler's headed there. Akram does bring it down. Couldn't spin his man. Devlin brings him down. And that is a deep free kick, which it looks like Nash is going to try and ping forward. That was a good idea to play that down the line, but it needed to be a bit wider still. Harding, good interception. Gonzalez Velasco gets that and keeps it in. Oh, that's a great play. He just had no options once he got it. We have got another throw in, though. Tuttle with said throw. Finds Afsar back to Harding. Not really sure what that was either. Evans, can he switch it? No, he plays it along the ground, and that is full-time anyway. Good performance. Very good performance. There are still things that I would like to change that I'm not 100% happy with, but a really good performance. We scored quick goals. That's what helps us out here. So two goals in two minutes at the start here from Hudson, Doncaster, and Jacob, and then two goals in five minutes just before half-time as well. That helps us out a lot. But the second half, once again, we were really poor. We just weren't really pushing forward. You kind of see the average position. I'd have liked the striker to be further forward. The two wide men to be out in their positions. Hudson Doncaster dropped very deep in that second half. You could argue the opposition are just trying to kill the game at that point and stop us from scoring more goals. But still, I think we could have um, pushed them more. And I know I say I don't like 6 nils all the time. But when you're 4-0 up at half time, you do want to kind of see a similar performance in the second half. And then when you don't get it, you're very, very frustrated. Alright, I think that was a good natural break, so I'm going to stop the recording of the video. There we are. So, to end the stream then, we're going to have a quick look at the schedule for the season. Because I've not had a good long look at that yet. And I want to kind of decide what's going to be in videos and what's going to be in streams. So, uh, we'll go through here quickly. We'll give Gonzalez Velasco his pat on the back and his thumbs up. Go because he got was it two goals and two assists, so he was absolutely incredible. We're actually not top of the league, Enfield are top of the league. They won 5 0, or at least they scored five goals. Yeah, they beat Amersham 5 0. So already you can see some of the score lines. We are starting to be a bit more realistic with the score lines. So, yeah, next up we've got London Tigers away, then we've got Enfield, which is already I'm anticipating a top of the table clash. I think when we come back next will probably be the cup match. Probably make this season last a bit longer. Yeah, I'm gonna as the seasons go on, I'm gonna stretch them out a lot longer. Last season we only had how many teams were in our league? It was in like twelve or something. So it was tricky anyway to stretch that one out. But there's a lot more uh, teams in the league now. In fact, there's seventeen. Maybe in, mm, hang on, maybe not then. One second. Uh, 
do, 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 do. What am I looking for? Club info. History, competitions. That's what I'm looking for. So there were 16 last season. There's 17. So there's two extra matches in the league now. Um, but I think the next match is going to be this one, which is the FA Vars first qualifying round. It's a monumentous occasion for us to play in the FA Vars for the first time this series. And then after that, it might be this cup game, then this cup game. Now, these are the streams I'm talking about. So in terms of Tuesday episodes, there are going to be other games like maybe the Enfield game. Um, maybe Harpenden, like kind of local rivalries in many respects. Um, but yeah, so you want it to run in tandem to the actual season. Well, the actual season doesn't start again until August. So we'll be waiting a while or July at least. Um, the idea is to kind of, when whilst Hatfield aren't playing on the pitch, we're going to be playing off the pitch. But once the real season starts again in, in July, August time, hopefully by then we're getting closer to the National League. So at that point, yeah, it will start running uh, a bit more synchronized. But um, I kind of, I feel bad because I want to give these leagues the, the respect they deserve as well. But when you're running a YouTube series where you're trying to get Hatfield as high up the football pyramid as possible, you do have a habit of skipping through the first seasons as quickly as possible um, in order to get to the more meatier leagues where it starts to get a bit more interesting, like getting into the football. So getting into the National League system is the first big step. Getting into the Football League is the first huge step. And then once you're in League 2, to get to League 1 isn't too tricky, but to get in the Championship and stay there is also a huge challenge. And then uh, in last year's save, it took me, I think, five seasons in the Championship before I finally got into the Premier League. So there's certainly um, big, huge hurdles that we still have to combat. And I want to try and do all of this on camera for once. Because in the past, I've said, we'll get to the Premier League, we'll get to the Premier League. And I always give up before we make it. This time around, I want to actually do it. And I want to take as many of the players with us as possible. So, um, yeah, there will be some synchronization. But at the same time, there will be, like, we'll fill the summer, basically, with Football Manager. Um, hopefully, everyone's on board with that. Plus, there'll be uh, chances for me to talk about how pre-season's going and things like that whilst we uh, we do the streams. But yeah, uh, I think the cup games are going to be the streamed games for the next couple of weeks, at least. We've got these three pretty close together. And then the Tuesday episodes will have um, key league matches. I am going to play the next couple of league matches, uh, at least the next league match off camera, just to get a scope of the squad still. Uh, the real question is, is Baker still suspended? He is not. So he'll be coming back into the squad. I think I might... No, I'll start him, actually. I will start him. Yeah, screw it. We'll start him. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for the stream, guys. I think we've had a good, long stream. My voice is hurting. So that always tells me I've had a good, long, hard stream. Let's turn the music off. There we go. Sudden stop, like the sudden start. I need to find a way to not do that, because that annoys me. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to hit the like button if you haven't done so already. Someone has, so I'm appreciative of that. But uh, everyone else, if you could hit the like button if you haven't done so already, that would be great. Um, also, drop some comments down below if you're watching this on playback. Let me know how you think the team's doing, any ideas for tactics. If you know how to stop them from just hoofing the ball long, whether that's a decision-making thing or whether that's a tactic that I've missed somewhere, do let me know because I'm scratching my head still on that one. Um, any suggestions for signings as well? So I'm looking for a central midfielder, um, a right back, and a striker. They're the three main positions. So season two of a lower league save, what would you recommend for those positions? Um, feel free to suggest those down below. And besides that, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. My channel is currently on 1,099 subscribers. So whoever hits the subscribe button next, you will be number 1,100. So uh, again, if you would like to be part of some M4J gaming history and you haven't subscribed to the channel already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and be the 1,100th person. Um, if you have already subscribed to the channel, thank you for helping me get to 1,099. That's also very much appreciated. And uh, yeah, take care, guys. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. And I'll see you all next time uh, for the cup game. So yeah, until then, guys, uh, I will see you soon. I really butchered that outro. Let's just pretend I got it absolutely spot on. See you next time, guys.